everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Lauren and this is part four of my Fabric Focus blog series where I want to help you understand a bit more about the different types of fabric that are out there so that you can pair them with sewing patterns for your home dressmaking projects. So this week I'm going to be focusing on fabrics that all have the same characteristic of being floaty, drapey, like moving around, slippery all over the place and those kind of fabrics can be made from various different fibres so it might be silk or viscose or rayon or medal or cupro but they've all got that same characteristic that they're really floppy and floaty. So each fabric that is made from a different fibre, you could probably go into much more detail about that on its own, but I've tried to keep things as sort of succinct and relative as I can to the home dressmaker and just sort of group them together because they do all behave in the same way and you can use them for really similar things. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention now is that a lot of the pattern recommendations that I'm going to give you can be used to with other fabrics. So, you know, a cotton lawn, for example, or, or you know, various other fabrics, depends on the pattern, of course. Um, so just bear that in mind, but I'm going to suggest ones that are good for those kind of floaty, drapey fabrics. So first of all, I want to talk a little bit about how they're made, because I think that will help you kind of understand the different properties that they have. They are all woven fabrics, and usually it's just that simple like over under weave that makes that kind of basic weave grid and um, sometimes they might have a twill texture to them so that's when um, the over under weave is offset a little bit and you get this diagonal kind of texture diagonal sort of surface on the fabric and it just makes the fabric a little bit thicker sometimes it can have what's called a dobe spot or like a little pattern kind of woven into it to give it some texture too so that's what this fabric here has sometimes they might be woven in a way that gives them almost like a sort of pebbly texture or a very subtle crinkle to them and that's a crepe and um, so within those different kinds of weaves you can get thick you know some are thicker than others and um, but even the sort of heavier thicker ones they will still drape and they will still move around quite a lot so in terms of the actual actual fibers themselves now that we've covered how they're how they can be woven together and um, kind of at the top end of the scale you've got silk and um, which is made from silkworm caterpillars and as they make their cocoon and um, they make this silk thread and then the thread hardens so then the cocoons are sort of unraveled basically and that's what gives you the silk thread which is then made into fabric so that's obviously kind of at the higher end. So another group of fibres that fall into this category are the viscose, rayon, medal, lyocell and cupro and they are all made from regenerated cellulose fibres so the way the process starts is that wood pulp is formed from wood it can be from other plants as well and then it goes through various chemical processes some of them are more environmentally friendly than others and then these fibers that are created are then woven into fabrics and um, so the medal and the lyocell they they are made in what's called a closed loop process so it means that the waste products are kind of like reused and kind of recovered and regenerated again it's the viscos and rayon that can produce more waste products and um, but you can find out loads more about this on um, the tensile and tensile lyocell website and it sort of explains how it's how it's all done really but because these fabrics have gone through quite a lot of processing to do them they kind of sit somewhere in between being a natural fiber and being man-made and um, the of course the initial substance is natural because it comes from trees um, or another plant but, but just because it goes through so many different processes then the, yeah they're kind of in between like a natural and a man-made fiber then you've got peach skin fabric like you see quite a lot of that around um, and that is usually made from polyester which is a completely synthetic fabric um, and this, the way that it's made the way that it's manufactured is that one set one surface the right side of the fabric so it almost feels like it's kind of been brushed a little bit and it gives it this really kind of very slight velvety kind of soft texture a bit like a peach skin hence the name and um, so that's another fabric that just falls into this kind of floaty category so in terms of washing and caring for these fabrics it's going to depend on what it's actually made from so if it's polyester you're going to be able to just chuck it in the washing machine 
it's not really going to shrink that much it'll just kind of be fine if it is one of the viscose rayon medal one of those ones you probably want to wash it at a slightly lower temperature so i would usually try to wash mine at 30 degrees um, and then try to air dry them what you can quite often find with these fabrics is that when they do dry they they feel a little bit hard and almost kind of crispy but as soon as you iron it and then it goes totally back to being like its normal floaty silky self again in terms of silk because it's a much more delicate fabric you just need to handle it with a bit more care i usually hand wash it and quite often i use soak which is just a really lovely natural mild detergent and you don't actually have to have to fully rinse it out either which is really good so it just means you can be really delicate with that so and from my experience silk doesn't really tend to shrink but you can get loads of different types of silk probably do a whole video just on silk itself so um, you might have to just look into that a little bit more if you are looking for silk now in terms of working with them the needle size i would suggest is probably a 70 and um, you could you could get away with an 80 as well um, but a 70 might be just a bit more gentle on the fabric. The pins that I use are different from my normal pins, so I try to save my super fine pins for the lighter weight fabric, and they're just much more gentle on the fabric. They're not going to snag at all, um, and they've got sprung steel in them as well, so they don't bend or anything, and yeah, they're just, they're just a bit more gentle on the more delicate fabrics. In terms of threads, I still just use Gutterman Sew All Threads, which is polyester thread. It's just such a good all round so I just tend to use that for everything. Then when it comes to cutting out there is a little bit more extra kind of work and preparation to do because this fabric does slip around so much so what I would suggest that you do is when you get your fabric have a look at the edge where it's been taken from the bolt or the roll and see if it has been torn or if it's been cut. If it's been torn it'll kind of look a bit like a sort of fluffy edge to it a little bit, look a little bit more like a selvage maybe um, and you know that if a fabric's been torn it always tears along the direction of the threads that have woven the fibre so you know that that tear is going to be at a 90 degree angle to the selvage which you can use to your advantage. If the fabric's been cut then you can't really rely on that being totally straight on the grain so you could if you wanted try to just make a little snip at the selvage and rip it yourself if you felt brave enough and um, if not then just try not to pay too much attention when you're lining your fabric up to that cut edge because it might it might end up looking a little bit distorted so either fold your fabric in half with the selvages together as you normally would or it might be that you're creating your own fold in the fabric so you're just folding the selvage back to create an, enough width that you need for your pattern piece and then just measure it to check that that you know the fold is even and you're probably going to want to pin it in place so either pinning the selvages together or pinning where that fold is and then if the if the fabric's been torn from the roller bolt you might want to line up those edges those torn edges too where you create the folds and pin them there too and then what I usually do is either I'll use a cutting mat on the table or I'll just use the corner of a table to try and square the fabric up to that and you have to kind of like use your hands to sort of smooth it out and just make sure that the fabric is straight on the table getting that spending a bit of time getting the fabric straight on the grain before you cut out will really help you when you come to actually construct your garment so you can of course just pin the pattern pieces on and cut it out if that's what you normally do or if you've got a bit more space and you've got the tools you can use a rotary cutter and pattern weights and then you need the self-healing mat on top of the table as well so I find that method works really well for me because it means that the fabric isn't being lifted up with the scissors as you cut everything can just be kept totally flat and um, but as I said it just depends on the sort of space and equipment that you've got you do need quite a big cutting mat if you're cutting out clothes because obviously the pattern pieces are quite large then when it comes to stabilizing the fabric at certain parts of it so for example your sewing pattern might tell you to st uh, stay stitch the neckline of your garment and because the fabric is just so light and flimsy I usually find that when I do stay stitch where you're sewing really close to the cut edge of the fabric it can still sort of distort it and stretch it a bit so what I've started using is the prim forming tape interfacing and it's basically a very lightweight iron-on interfacing that's cut on the bias and it has a chain stitch stitched through it which is effectively the stay stitch so you literally just 
iron that on to the back of your fabric along the neckline or any other part of the garment that you feel needs stabilized or you're instructed to stabilize it so it's basically yeah it's basically like ironing on a stay stitch and it just means that the fabric can stay nice and flat and smooth and i think it's just a much quicker easier way to stabilize the fabric and then when you do come to sew the seams, sometimes what can happen is, again, because the fabric is just so lightweight, when you start your seam, it can almost seem like the machine is sort of eating it or the fabric is getting like pulled or drawn into the machine. So first of all, make sure that you've got a nice sharp new needle. It might be that the needle's not as, as a bit blunt and is just pushing the fabric through. The other thing that you can try is just moving the fabric down a little bit so that when you actually do start sewing, there's just more fabric for the machine to kind of feed through. So instead of starting at the top of the fabric, coming down and doing your reverse, it might be that you start a little bit further down go back a little bit to do your reverse your back stitch and then sew your seam so just watch out for that one when you're starting your seams and um, I also usually like doing French seams if I can or if I can be bothered and um, when I'm making garments with this fabric because it just looks much nicer on the inside and it doesn't mean that you're adding bulk to the lightweight fabric with an overlocker or with you know a zigzag stitch or whatever it's just a much nicer neater professional way to do it with the French seam so I've got some really lovely pattern recommendations for you and what suge some suggestions for what you can actually make with this fabric now. Because the fabric is really versatile and it can be made for loads of different projects, I've just sectioned it out by type of garment. So first of all, I'm going to cover tops. And when you think of a top made out of this fabric, think of something that's probably a bit looser fitting and is nice and kind of breezy and yeah, just the, the the cut and the style of the garment is just going to allow for that movement to take place in the fabric i think that little details are really nice as well so it might be little tucks or gathers or pleats because the fabric is so delicate it can take design features like gathers for example where the fabric's more bunched together because it still won't feel bulky because the fabric will just kind of drape and hang so I have used the simple top pattern from my book to make a top that's got little pin tucks in it I did a hack on my blog a few years ago of how to do this um, and you can see that the fabric just sits really nicely into those pin tucks I've also made a various True Bias Ogden camis I've got one in the Atelier Brunette viscose crepe in a navy blue and then also just in a patterned viscose crepe too and you can see that because the Ogden cami's got that A-line shape it just swishes around really nicely. I've also made a grain line scout tee out of viscose and because the style of that garment is really loose it doesn't have any darts or anything to make it fitted it just suits the lightweight swishy fabric really nicely because it just kind of hangs around your body and that's sort of where the fitting comes from. Other good pattern suggestions are the named patterns, Sunotu so Kimono, don't, not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, um, the Green Line Hadley Top, the Liesel & Co Chai Tea, the Cashmere at Webster Top, it's got that lovely sort of crossover at the back as well, which is just nice for delicate fabric. The Dirindo Datora top mentioned the Green Line Scout tee and the Tilly in the Button Stevie top as well. So I've got a couple of fabrics that I wanted to sort of hold out and kind of show you swooshing around as well. This is the Atelier Brunette Viscose Crepe that I was talking about. And when I hold that up to the camera, hopefully you can kind of see just the nice swishy movement that it's got. And it's quite um, opaque as well. You can't, you know, when you put your hand up to it, you can't see your hand through it or anything so it's a really good all-rounder that one and um, this is another Atelier Brunette one and it's got that little sort of PK Dobe spot it's got that texture running through it um, and when I hold that up I think you'll be able to see that this one is just a little bit more transparent so that's the one where you're looking at either lining it or just you know you could wear a little camisole underneath it if you made a top or a blouse or something but still really beautiful and kind of moves around and drapes really nicely so the next little category are shirts and blouses one of my favorite things to make and I find that these fabrics work really well with again the details that are in shirts and blouses so little collars and cuffs and um, 
it's just really satisfying to kind of sew that type of garment with it. I've made a paper cut patterns at my Issa blouse with, again, that was the Atelier Brunette Viscose Crepe, told you it's good fabric. And I've also made the Closet Case Patterns Cali shirt, which is actually what I've got on just now. And that is using, it's actually a viscose and linen fabric. Unfortunately, we don't have this print left, but we do have this one here, um, which is a little spotty pattern. Um, and you can see that even though it's got the linen in it, because it's got viscose, um, it just still drapes beautifully, but it's got more of that kind of slubby natural texture to it. The Deer and Doe Melilo shirt is another, another lovely blouse for this kind of fabric. And the Tilly and the Buttons Orla blouse, it's got the little um, collar, the, the scallop shaped collar, which is cute. Um, the Pauline Alice Vera shirt and the Greenline Archer shirt. And it's got that kind of gathered detail at the back. So again, all really lovely patterns to make with viscose. So the next category is skirts. And when you think of skirts made out of this fabric, you need to think of something that's a bit fuller. So something that's gathered or it's got panels in it or it's like really quite shaped and A-lined. Something that's gonna be able to like really kind of swish and move around. And the slightly heavier ones, which tend to be the twill weave. So we've got a range of tensile twills which would be make beautiful skirts. And that is what this um, maroon one is here. So if I hold that up and kind of swish it around, you'll sort of see what I mean. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. It feels really, really, really soft as well. And yeah, just got gorgeous, gorgeous movement to it. Um, the Nina Lee Q skirt is another good, good one to do. The Deer and Doe Fumitier, sorry, I'm probably not pronouncing these right. The Tilly and the Buttons Dominique, that sort of longer length version would be good for this too. And then the skirt version of the Sew Over It Rosie dress would also be good for this kind of fabric. So yeah, that's the, the tensile twill. And then I've also got this one here, which is a viscose crepe. And it's also got a sort of slubby texture to it. It's really beautiful. Um, I'll open that out so that you can see it too. It's a really, really lovely one, nice bold pattern. And again, it's just got really lovely swishy movement to it. So the next category is dresses and there's so many different patterns that you can use to make beautiful dresses with this kind of fabric. Unfortunately, I've not got lots of samples to show you because I don't wear dresses that often. But I do have a green line older shirt dress, which I really love. I made that out of a viscose and I did the version that's got the gathers at the back and it just works really nicely because the fabric's so floaty. Um, but think of anything that's got a fuller skirt section to it, that's what's going to be best. So examples are the Sew so Over at Eve dress, the Nina Lee Q dress, the Megan Nielsen Studley dress, Sudley dress, the Deer and Doe Magnolia, the Sew so Over It Penny dress, the True Bias Southport dress, the Tilly and the Buttons Seren, and the Tilly and the Buttons Stevie, the dress version of that, the Deer and Doe Myosotis, the Closet Case Patterns Charlie Kaftan, and the Tilly and the Buttons Bettine dress would be another good one too. So I'm thinking something like this is just gorgeous. This is the Atelier Brunette Moonstone Viscose and it would make an absolutely beautiful dress. It's really, really nice and yeah, quite a modern print as well. If you like something a bit more florally, then this art gallery one is gorgeous. It comes in a few colourways as well. And this is a new colourway that we've had in it. It's kind of teal coloured and it is just beautiful as well. Very, very silky, very, very soft, swishy and floaty. And then of course, the good old Atelier Brunette Viscose Crepes. I tell you, they're just so versatile. They come in so many different colours as well. They're just really beautiful. This is, I think this is the terracotta one that I've got here. Um, and yeah, it's just go just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So the last little category of sewing patterns are trousers and jumpsuits. And I think those kind of garments made out of this fabric look really, really smart and elegant, especially the styles that have got the kind of longer leg. I've used viscose crepe to make the Tilly and the Buttons marigold trousers before in the summer, which were really nice, I loved them. And then I've also used some of our Florenza crepe um, to make this new look jumpsuit which I sort of adapted a little bit 
and it is pattern 6446. We don't actually stock those ones, but you can, it's widely available online. Um, other pattern suggestions are the Soho 7 Burnside Bibs, the Marigold Jumpsuit and Trousers, I mentioned that before, the Paper Cut Pattern Sierra Jumpsuit, and the True Bias Yari Jumpsuit. So again, the, the tensile twills that I mentioned before would be perfect for jumpsuits because they've got that really nice weight to them. And then the Florenza crepe that I use to make mine, that comes in a few different patterns as well if you like things that are patterned. So I hope that's given you some inspiration and a bit of a better understanding of what you can actually do with these fabrics. If you liked the video, just remember to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe so that you can tune into my next video. And if you haven't seen the other ones in this series, then you can check back and see woven cotton, denim and stretchy jersey fabric too. I'm going to be taking a little break from this series to focus on some other new videos for you. But if you have got any requests for other fabric focus videos that you'd like me to do, please just leave your suggestions in the comments. I'm always more than happy to take on board any suggestions and feedback. Of course, as always, you can check out my blog where I've linked to all the patterns that I've mentioned and you can see lots of the fabrics that I've suggested too that you can all get in my shop and we ship worldwide as well. But thanks so much for watching guys um, and I'll see you next time. Bye!